kid. Seriously. <laughs> to a traveling edition of the Star Wars in Review podcast. Over there, it's my better podcasting half who once gave himself a nickname. It's Luke Neitzel. On this side of the table, it's me, Maya Madrid, and I called him that nickname for years. Every so often, he and I band together like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and do our best to take on the hypercritical world of the Star Wars critique by going through the news, answering your kids' seriously serious questions, and reviewing an episode from the Clone Wars series. Luke, how are you doing, buddy? Ah, uh, I've had better weeks. I did give myself a nickname, and it totally works, and nobody knew for years, and then I avoided getting a bad nickname, like Milk Jug. Yeah, that was mine. That was the nickname that I got. I guess I should have given myself one. Exactly, but my week's been rough. I didn't get to see my buddy Jim this week, so oh, that always... Oh, those viewers are very sad about that, I'm sure. Not as sad as I was, but... I'm, I'm getting through. Chicago backed out of the World Cup bid in 2026. So. <laughs> Thereby saving their fiscal future. I 100% understand why you would do that, but as a non-Illinois resident, that really bums me out, because I could have been there in an hour and a half. But other, other than that, I'm hanging in there. Uh, well, on this side of the table, I am deathly afraid that I may have a kidney stone. Are you serious? Yeah. Um, and, I, I, you know, maybe it's just being a hypochondriac. Wow. But yeah, I mean that's that's me. Uh, but it's interesting when you talk to people about kidney stones. Usually, you know, like if if you're going through some sort of scary event, people will be like, "Oh, don't worry, dude. You'll get a job, or you'll get a new girlfriend, or you'll move past this hardship in some way." But with a kidney stone, there ain't none of that. Okay, they tell you all about the story when they or someone else had to go into my and go into minute detail about how the unlucky people had to pass one or even the more unlucky people had to have surgery to blast one. There is no comfort. There is no solace. No, it's just bleakness. And, and I'll say that I've never had a kidney stone, but I've had seizures and I don't remember those. You just wake up and you're done. So, you know, you need a nap for a while, but I'll, I'll take that over, you know, pissing a stone on my dick or whatever you That's have right. to do. That's right. I start shooting out stones for my midsection exactly. in the middle of the show here. If I, uh, if I fall down and, and start crying like a little baby. Can, can Before you dive too deep in, can yeah. I just say that we have achieved a milestone? We are, we are not in the camera studios. We're not. We are doing a live performance in a, a sold-out room. We have all of the tickets have been sold. All yep, all one of them. We have a spectator. So this is this is quite big for our for two months in to ha to have a, a live studio audience here. I think that is pretty exciting. Uh, but let's get to the news. Luke, the Last Jedi, one of the highest grossing films of all time, as well as the most divisive Star Wars movie of all time has come to digital video, and it's unleashed a blast of angst from here all the way to Tatooine. Luke, Luke Neitzel, you were privy to some of that blasting for your flippant attack on the cinematic quality of The Force Awakens. Your message of hate triggered quite... <laughs> you can get through it. Your message of hate triggered quite the response, nearly tearing the internet apart. A divided house Luke cannot stand. I'm going to turn it over to you so you can explain this terrible and awful situation. So I am on Twitter. Yes. And you are on Twitter. Yes. And we created these accounts specifically when we created the show. Right. And I have 13 followers as of this All morning. All 13. That I, is there's a lot. one more than, or two more. I've gained two, two more since Tuesday. Uh, there's a reason but, for that. But just to put that in perspective, if you think that, you know, I have 13 followers, and if you think that one of them is you, right. one of them is the Kids Seriously account. And, and by the way, you just followed me this week, which I think was a total I jerk did. move. I, I mean, if you're not going to do it at the beginning, to do it later, just so you can DM me, is kind of bullcrap. Yeah, pretty much. One of them is Jed, who contributes, and one of them is Gabe, who contributes. Right. So that means that basically 30% of my followers are people <laughs> directly associated with that. And that doesn't include... Well, that's about equal for all the time you spend on that particular account. Exactly. And, 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 that, and, and there's you know, and, you know, some naked lady bots that follow me as well. So when you talk about real, actual followers, there's like two. Right. Two, two or three. So... Uh, on Tuesday, I tweeted to my mass following of, at that time, 11 people, a, a really funny tweet that was from uh, Ga Gabrielle, who is at Daisy Ridley, but spelled uh, R-I-D-L-E-E-E. -E -E. 
And it's a quote from Ryan Johnson from the commentary saying, you can see Laura Dune say pew when she fires the gun, which she could never not do every time she shot it. And it has a gif of Laura Dern where you can clearly see her going pew. And it's awesome. It's hilarious. So I retweeted that basically to piss you off. Right. Because and this is where it goes south. Yeah, because you, you love uh, The Force Awakens. I sure do. And I'm not a massive fan of that one. And I loved Last Jedi, which you're not really a fan of. So not I, at all. I didn't even at you, but I just said, this ends the argument for good. Hashtag Last Jedi is far superior to Force Awakens. Hashtag Star Wars. So that's to my third or 11 followers right. at that time. And apparently people must have been searching the hashtag or something because as of today... That had 166,000 impressions or views and um, 946 different engagements, according Ooh. to Twitter statistics. It's so popular. Which is insanity. I don't understand why. I thought I was mildly clever for someone like me, but it's not that good. You know, so I appreciate the 483 people who liked it and the 54 who retweeted it. But the absolute best part is the responses oh. that I... I I think we're going to go through them, Luke. We are, pretty much line by line. And my favorite thing about this is some of these people had some funny responses and some responses where they wanted a discussion and things like that. But there are some people who honestly think that my definition of what separates a good movie from a bad movie is the amount of times that Laura Dern goes, pew, in said movie. And I find that just to be fabulous. Well, I think everything about this movie and the whole fandom thing has been absolutely fabulous. So, so just to, to give you a feel of some of the reactions I got, Tan replies with a gif from some movie of a bald man going, no, ha, 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 ha. That's good. It's pretty good. LJ uh, Nielsen tells me that that was a pointless character. Maybe, but it's Laura Dern, so it's awesome she's there. Be happy. Colin Mann writes me and says, TLJ is awful in my opinion. Just a pastiche of thoughts and scenes from previous films with little originality. I hope for Colin's sake you didn't see The Force Awakens. Did, uh, do you know what pastiche means? Yeah. Okay, I didn't. Uh, it means an artistic work in a style that imitates that of another work, artist, or period. It's also a really good restaurant in the third ward. Oh, okay. Uh, Zoller Cartoons writes and says, The Force Awakens is definitely better. This is not an opinion. This is fact. This is this law. Is my, this is my favorite one. This, this is law. But, I'm going to end every podcast with saying, this is law. And I like this because I, 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 I envision this one as being lighthearted right. or whatever. Um, and then there was a lot in this, in this vein where uh, Channing Cage chimes in and says, they're both garbage. But, now, this is one of my favorites. This is Trevor Beast 454 oh, who writes beast. in to say, of all the things to discuss when comparing the two Star Wars episodes, this is the definitive reason? What? Exclamation point. No, Trevor Beast. It is not. It is a joke on Twitter, and I'm a stranger. Laura Conway <laughs> writes in, Last Jedi has 48% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yep. Still falling. Well, that's audience score. No, we'll talk about that. And, you know, Cinescore has an A+. Pick your Yelp metric that best fits your argument. Sound so like a Fox News Either guy. ways, go for it. Well, you know, we, we pick the facts that apply to us, apparently, huh? They sure do. Oh, Laura. Um, this is another great one, especially based on the profile picture. This is Little Enos, and he tells me, Except the do- the domestic box office, which was over thirty percent less, and I-, I clicked on little Enos, who has a little picture- Enos. Or, no, I'm going to go with Enos. No, I like it better with Enos. Okay, he has a picture of Orson Welles as a profile pic, and um, he has the Marx Brothers as his background. Um, but going by his his metric of domestic box office, they are crap compared to Avatar and Fast and the Furious Eight because Ooh. domestic box office Reach is it, the brother. determiner of what is a good movie. So. Furious 8 is um, what Orson Welles wishes he was. So thank you, little Enos. Michael, if TFA was bad, then uh, Last Jedi was the biggest load of dog, something that I'm not going to read in front of Boom, uh, with the Star Wars name attached to it. Yeah, if, if that's what you think, that's fine. More in the same vein, Russ Wood, the bar was pretty low, they both suck. This is my second favorite. Okay. This is Chris Capaldi, 16-3. He is an Eagle fan, so congrats on your Super Bowl. He has crying from laughing emoji, and then, please don't embarrass yourself. If this was an actual discussion, I could give about 80 reasons why it's worse. I'm serious. At least 80 reasons. I could probably go over 120. I like this guy already. Chris, I'm not serious. It's a joke about someone going pew when they fire a blaster. But then my favorite part is right below it. Richard replies, the new Star Wars trilogy is unicorn poop. And I don't know if that's a compliment or a bad thing. 
I don't know what unicorns. I mean, it could be Skittles, it could be cupcakes, or it, it could be extra. I, I don't honestly know. My my guy on my side that I actually retweeted is Joel, who said he had a, a gif of a dumpster fire and then said, "Not even this can save the dumpster fire." Lord Dern is awesome, though. He was the only person I think who actually got that it was just a joke. Out of the Lord 180 Dern billion Q. people who looked at this, he was the only one who got it. Pretty much, okay. and then it, well, is that it like responded. you, the only one who got it the last Jedi? That responded. Sure. Well, the 453 people liked it, so apparently some people did. Yeah. You know, T, uh, Last Jedi is an abomination. Uh, oh, this is a good one. <laughs> this ends the argument, in quotes. Dude, Leia flew through space. Get the F out. <laughs> yeah, fair point, actually, on that one. Oh, this is good. This is a good perspective. Uh, that's like saying Stalin was better than Hitler. One might be a little better than the other, but both are dog excrement and should be condemned at every level. Intelligent conversation. <laughs> <laughs> So this guy he immediately goes to Stalin and Hitler. I like it. Well, he's on the internet, so if you don't invoke Hitler immediately in an argument, then you're not doing Twitter properly. That's true. Um, and then you have a couple more. They suck. Unfortunately, the best response, which was the first response, was deleted by the user. Oh. Um, his name was, it was something like Biohazard. Nice. And he had a Biohazard thing. And um, it, it was fantastic because it was it was every single character talking about how I must support Hillary, and this comment was for people who liked Hillary and are sore that she lost, so they wrote a movie about it, and now you're mad that nobody likes your movie. <laughs> and it was great, because not only did, was that a fantastic comment that I wish I would have screen captured if I knew he was going to delete it, but I clicked then on his, his profile, and he isn't following anyone. He had no followers, and he had one tweet that, was, that he had pinned, and it was his only tweet, and it was something like, I will spread death and truth to the masses. So there's no tweets other than that. But then when you click on responses, there's a million of him just putting himself into an argument that he is not a part of and yelling at people. And I was like, if that isn't what I want out of Twitter, because I've said from the get-go, and it's even pinned in my Twitter account, is all I want from my Twitter account is people telling me I suck. And I got to spend two straight days of just getting replies about it. That is fantastic. And if that is your goal with each new viewer we get, you'll get one more person to fulfill that goal. Now, I have some things. First of all, you ask for a reaction, you're going to get a reaction, and then this is what happens. I'm not Unless, upset. No, I'm... I know you're not upset, but I'm just saying don't be surprised either. This is the most divisive film in all of fandom, in all of the fandoms. And so if you ask for a reaction, you're going to get one, especially when you troll something out like that. Hey, uh, last week we talked about the solo plagiarism story. You might remember that. This week, while maintaining that they had subbed the posters out to a third party, Disney released a set of new posters with similar colors, but a different design. Luke, have you seen the new designs? What do you make of them? And are we ever going to hear the true ending to this story? Uh, I don't think we will, because I don't think most people will dig into it. I think those posters were planned, released. I don't think they're new changes that they made. Really? Like a, no, because actually I've noticed on the Han Solo Twitter, which I follow, they're still using... They switched from the Solo logo to the plagiarized poster as really? their their twitter um icon so i don't I, I don't think they're backing down at all i think those posters were already planned expansions of this first set of posters so i think like i said i think they'll just pay for it and they'll they'll keep it up that, i mean that could be because you notice that the the artist took the tweet down and we talked about that last week Cha -ching. Uh, one, yeah for sure uh one and he should because they're oh, cool yeah. posters uh, one thing that, that makes me disagree with the idea that this that the new ones were planned is that the guns have all been taken away from the new ones. There's no guns in any of the new ones. And the, the speculation is that might be a response to what happened in Florida. And so I do think that these were, were oh. newer creations. But I don't but know that for They're fact. so close in tone that even if they did if they did do that because of Parkland, I imagine yeah. they took an existing the, – that design and Designed took out in, the, the gun. And it isn't a response to the plagiarism thing at all. It's just – just a response can I, to something else. Can I get really weird on you here? Please. So the, Weirder than your kidney stone? <laughs> yes, weirder than that. One thing that I noticed is, and I actually looked at the color wheel. And if you look at the four characters, okay? Like, Han has got a red color. And opposite of that is Lando, who's got, like, a blue color. Like, if you go straight across from the red on the color wheel and go one off, and it's Lando's purple. blue. Hold on. And it's Lando's blue. And then when you look right across from Chewie in the same way and go the same way, it's Kira's purple. And so what I'm thinking, 
Okay? And I know people already said this, but I'm thinking, I'm convinced that Han is to Chewie as Lando is to Kira. And I know that's weird, but I just well, I noticed see, it. Well, what it, what immediately jumps into my head is more when you, like, you mix primary colors. So I think what's going to happen is that Han's <laughs> going to bang Lando and Darna- Daenerys is going to be the result of that. All right. I think I'd be closer to the truth. <laughs> Maybe. You. Hey, uh, Mark Hamill got his star on the Walk of Fame. What took so long? Uh, I don't know. Those things are random. I mean, I, I went to the Hall of Fame once and got a picture of John Tesh's star, so I have no idea how that, that selection is made. I think some people can pay for him. I think some people they try to honor with them. I, I don't think he went and just bought one, but I think John Tesh probably did. <laughs> I have no, no idea how that stuff is determined, but he's hilarious. He's obviously um, iconic, not just for Star Wars, but for his voice acting work. I would... I would make the argument personally that the Joker is a better overall performance from yeah, Mark probably. Hamill that, and, and maybe even a more important one, even though it won't be remembered quite as well. Um, that, that's what I'll always think of him at his best is at the, at the Joker. So I, it's an honor for a guy who's not just one character. All right. Let's talk about our kids seriously serious questions. Now, first, uh, Gabe in Janesville, contributor to uh, the show, Asks, what sorts of things would need to be included in a Jabba the Hutt standalone film? Um, a Jabba the Hutt style of film would have to have uh, some really, really strong supporting characters, stronger than I think we've seen, if they want it to be a serious film. And I, my immediate instinct in my head, and I'm guessing what most people's would be, is that they'd want to make it a Godfather esque gangster type movie because the Hutts are gangsters as as they say Um, I almost though would want to see that go in a different route if you're gonna do a comedy why why not make it a Jabba the Hutt comedy why not have some some wacky stupid things with uh, the dumb bounty hunters he deals with I mean when you really look at what Bubba Bubba Fett accomplishes it's mostly by accident and and Pratt falls and he's got salacious crumb who just cackles at his at his feet I think you, you take a story that really has no connection to the main universe other than maybe some characters we have, and why don't you go that route as a, a comedy, as a way to try to, to switch genres, especially if this Han Solo thing doesn't work out so well, which you know I'm hoping isn't the case, but obviously people are worried about. I don't, I don't want to see another one that's probably going to be similar if you made a Job of the Hutt gangster movie. So take this, take this one comedy and, and add, some, add some craziness to it, some zaniness. Just, just go over the top of it. I have uh, one request if they do make this movie. Please... No size noodles. Question number two. <laughs> Miss Boom, if you'll come over, you've got question number two All right. for Luke Neitzel here. Our audience member. That's right. Can what you go right well? Hold on, right to the mic. What did you think about crystal foxes? I thought they were they were cool. I thought they looked really pretty on the scene. I'm I'm a dog lover. I have two dogs. Wolves were always my favorite animals growing up. Um, so I, I thought they were a pretty cool design. Um, I kind of enjoyed um, how they 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 helped the rebels escape too because they kind of followed them through. So I thought they were they were pretty fun. What what did you think of them? I thought they were really pretty. They were. Wouldn't it be fun if you could get one of those in real life? Yeah. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> All right, thank Great you, Boston. Excellent question. I suppose we should get to that Clone Wars episode. Yeah. Clone Wars season one, episode eight, Bomb Bad Jedi. <laughs> Heroes are made by the times. Directed by Jesse Ye, or yeah, it could be yeah. Who cares? Uh, yeah, right. This story was written by, by perhaps my least favorite Star Wars comic book writer, written. Kevin Rubio, who was also the creator and writer of the Tag and Bink series. This episode is going to follow our two favorite characters, C-3PO and Jar Jar Binks, as they rescue a damsel in distress known as Padme. So everything about this is bad, and I'm going to try to walk you well, walk you through uh, it. Ladies and gentlemen. Hey, hold on. There's a sweet ship. We got the ship from uh, the prequels, and I like that. So not everything's bad. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's as you said, it's, it's a Jar Jar C-3PO buddy comedy act for, for 23 minutes. So 
Um, we watched it, and we're going to describe it now for you in the hopes that you never have to Don't watch it. Don't just skip it. Just skip it. Don't do it to yourself. Yeah, it's 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 as bad as it sounds, and it's not bad in a this-is-so-bad-it's-fun way. It's just bad. Yeah. But we start off with uh, Padme is flying off to go visit uh, is it Rhodia, I believe is the planet, yeah. which is a swamp planet. It's where Greedo is from, so it's his race of people. It is again on the Outer Rim. And she is going there to try to convince them to join the Republic side of the battle. And the ruler there, who she calls what Uncle, I, don't, I always want to say Uncle Eeyore, but it was like uh, Uncle Ono, That's is right. a longtime family friend of hers. So she thinks this is going to be a pretty easy win. She flies out there, despite Palpatine's suggestion, she take, I don't know, at least one guard or weapon with her. But instead, she goes uh, into hostile territory with just Jar Jar and C-3PO for some reason. And even she knows that's a bad idea because when she lands there, she specifically tells them not to get off the ship because she knows they'll ruin everything. And they do. And they do. And so it goes. So she goes and meets with uh, uh, Uncle, Uncle Ono. And he basically, and I actually think this is where this is where the episode actually has a few moments that I think are interesting, where she goes and talks to him about joining the Republic, and he says, you know, we've been friends, and I've supported the Republic the whole time, but my people are starving to death and dying, and nobody is helping me. You know, why why won't you help me? <laughs> oh, there's somebody who's going to help him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But but you know, I think it does have you know some some interesting things, and to, to bring in that concept of. The Republic has started this war or is part, as responsible for this war as anyone else. There are people that aren't necessarily the closest people to them that are getting caught in the crossfire and they're not really working to, to help them and their people are starving to death and dying. And luckily, we've never experienced anything like that in U.S. history, certainly not recently. So it, it, to have something just completely out of left field that I've never thought about was great. It's just open. I mean, it just... Opened my eyes to something I don't think about every day yeah. in my life. Yeah, but but I thought it was an interesting idea to bring to the table, all, all cynicism aside. It's too um, bad they totally botched the entire thing. But, but. yeah, they, I, it just goes off the rails so quickly. So he then reveals to her that he's already sided with the separatists because they are bringing him food for his people who are starving but their price of course is that they want her captured so that's the reason they've lured her here she's immediately arrested and put into jail because she's padme and the only purpose of padme as we've seen her thus far in the series is to be someone who has to be saved despite being maybe smarter and stronger than most of the jedi uh in 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 the series so far in the movies so then we cut back to Jar Jar and C-3PO. They're not supposed to move the ship. Within 30 seconds of, of seeing them, Jar Jar's already fallen down and knocked things over. And, and both the actors from the movie are here to voice their terrible characters. Uh, for some reason, they find a robe. So Jar Jar Jess is up in it. They wander out of the ship. The ship blows up because Jar Jar does something to... Drops a magnet on it. He drops a magnet on it after he got 3PO trapped in the magnets. And then they uh, get attacked by, by battle droids. C-3PO is taken prisoner. Jar Jar jumps into the water of the swamp planet, which he thinks is kind of familiar. Yeah, that's one thing I didn't understand. I want to stop and talk about this. He keeps talking about how he's from a swamp planet. He's from a swamp planet. He wasn't from a swamp planet. Naboo is easily the nicest planet um, that we've seen. Dagobah is the swamp planet of the swamp planet. Uh, I was confused by that. Well, I think he, he was. They were trying to show he had some akin to sea monsters, but it, it, it's a stretch anyway. I mean, you're in a completely different part of the galaxy. You and know, I mean, it's he was like under the water. I can't. I can't even. I can't even understand people with thick southern accents, let alone you know a sea monster in another planet. So it, it was a stretch. I wonder if that'll come back later in the episode to help him, though. Oh goodness. Um, I, I'm gonna skip through this relatively quick because it's so it's it's so bad. But it's it's a series of C-3PO wandering around saying dumb things. Uh, for some reason, they have to take him to a, a destruction facility rather than just shooting him into a million pieces right there because that's all they're trying to accomplish. But the battle droids march him off. Jar Jar ends up making friends with the giant sea slug. Padme does manage to escape on her own, so at least they gave her 10 seconds of looking like she was capable, and then she's immediately recaptured. She's brought together again uh, with C-3PO, and they're about to be executed when Jar Jar emerges. Because he's wearing a robe, everyone thinks he's a Jedi, which led me to believe why doesn't every poor person or person who's being picked on just wear a robe so people think they're a Jedi and leave them alone. 
and then he somehow manages to summon a slug, a giant sea slug that uh, drops on all the droids, and then the Republic arrives at that moment with about 80 battle cruisers, and they arrest Newt Gunray, who also featured heavily in this episode, which is another disappointment because that's another character that needs to be removed as much as possible from these storylines. I did notice that they changed his voice slightly Mm -hmm. to make it less uh, offensive as to what type of stereotype they were trying to portray. But you have, you have Jar Jar, you have C-3PO, which I don't know, maybe some, some people like, I find him to be, I find him to be worse than Jar Jar through the course of the movies, as far as how annoying he is. And then you have Newt Gunray, who is a horrible, you know, stereotype, type that that lucas pushed forward on us i mean really the only things i can think of we were missing was was watto coming in and doing his thing to to really make this the worst assembly of characters doing the worst assembly of things they could i have i i made my little point about how i thought there was the chance at a good theme in there but everything else about this episode is awful yeah i mean it, it almost pales in, to, to talk about some of the other negativity about this i mean uh, it's The dialogue is terrible. It doesn't sound like Padme. It doesn't sound like any realistic character in any universe or realistic person at all. The things that she says, I mean, it's it's basically Kevin Rubio doing his same tag and bink shtick, um, which I think is tried and annoying. And it doesn't. It didn't work there. It doesn't work here. It just makes the characters that you actually do like in this episode makes them feel corny and lame. Jar Jar, as we said, did, does his Jar Jar thing, and it was annoying in the movies, and it's annoying now. The visuals take a huge step down, especially um, after the most recent episode. You know, I will say that the Rodian planet, Rodia looks cool, but it also seems really small. Like, a lot of these par- planets, and that was true in the first episode, where these planets are, like, big, but we just see, like, a, like a, like a, we don't see any people, and we don't see any... So it's like these empty planets, um, and that's starting to bother me a little bit. That magnet destroying the ship was just stupid. It was done like a Tom and Jerry episode, and it just, you know, even the music. The music was like it was uh, in last week's episode, except now they added like a Renaissance Fair feel to it, and it just it just took me out of it. It just, everything about this, as soon as I saw Kevin Rubio, I like just, I was like, oh no, what is this? And it just got worse and worse and worse. Where do you rank it? Oh, it's it's dead last. It yeah, gets, me too. I have a new scale um, that I'm going to call the pew scale. Yeah. Of the amount of pews Laura Dern would give this while she was firing at it, and this gets this gets zero pews. It's not worthy of. I a think pew. she would it's shoot at it last. more. I think you should. No, do this in she's too classy. She would just walk away from this altogether and not be associated with it. So it gets zero pews. It's dead last by leaps and bounds. I I am worried to think that there could ever be anything that could be worse than this episode. I guess we'll find out because there's a lot of episodes to go. Have we hit the bottom? That is the real question but, that we're asking you here tonight. Uh, you have to think that we will see more of, of Jar Jar um, oh, okay. throughout, throughout this. So hopefully they can find a better way to integrate him. I hope there isn't another episode. I don't know if episode. I can finish this, dude, if we're going <laughs> to see more episodes like this. Well, my hope for him is if they have to keep him around is that it's, it's background role. Kind of what happened to him in the last two movies of the prequels where they realized how much everyone despised him and he was relegated to the background. Yeah. Uh, so th- that's what needs to happen here, too. You cannot make him the main focal character of any episode. It is just too painful. Let's move on to other news. Now I'm a nerd. We have news for the beautiful people. There's a lot more of us in our view. Luke, what news got your what nerd stuff's got you going this week? Well, I started Jessica Jones. Did you? I am. I'm. Have you started it or? I have not. No. I know you're not. You don't get into the Netflix shows other than Daredevil as much as I have. But um, it's it's gotten kind of mixed reviews. And I started out. I'm only four in. Um, and I can already tell you that 13 is going to be too long. But that's been the complaint of every mm-hmm. Netflix. Marvel show for me. Uh, initially, I was a little disappointed with the direction it was going, but then I kind of figured out what it is. And I think what you have to do when you watch this one is realize that it is not going to be Daredevil. It is not going to be your traditional superhero movie. It is a detective story. You're following a detective I, story. I like that. That it, sounds cool. Exactly. And the superhero elements and the power she has are very, very secondary to the detective story that is unfolding. Sure. And when you realize that it's, that's what it is and that's what your expectation is, I'm really enjoying it. But it took me a couple episodes. I watched the first two episodes and I was like, I don't know if I want to finish this. And I was like, well, I'm going to watch the third. 
because I've said the the first season is my favorite MCU thing of all time. Right. Um, so I decided to stick with it, and I was like, you know what? I get what this is now, and I and now that I'm I'm realizing that and happy with it, I'm I'm really enjoying it. So hopefully it continues continues to go. I I still think Defenders was eight episodes. I think all these shows should be eight episodes, yeah. and I think that would be the perfect amount. But it, it's it's one to give a try, and I would say just know that going in, and maybe stick it out a little through the first couple, and um, it, it looks like it's starting to pay dividends. Good. Uh, for me, I've been playing uh, the last couple nights NCAA football on an older system on my PS3. Uh, they don't make that game anymore because of the lawsuit, basically. Um, the United States government and the judicial system decided they didn't want college football players to be indentured servants and have their stuff sold. So now uh, they can't make the video game anymore. So I have to go buy the old or go play the old video game. Now what happens is all these nerds that are even more nerdy than I, because they take it to the next step, they spend all this time in chat rooms ganging together to go and put like accurate statistics and accurate names on these new players every year. And then they share them on the internet, and then I can take them and up, update my rosters. And so oh, I've been playing uh, with my beloved Wisconsin oh, Badgers. That's awesome. <laughs> so, that, that reminds me because I I'm not a big video game guy, but I I played video I haven't played video games in years, but I I played a little bit in college. And what I would play generally was um, wrestling oh, God. games. And what you, you you they had the create your own wrestler feature. Right. So you would just go online and you would find the guy who was like. I created, you know, they were generally, they were WWEs, but it'd be like, oh, you know, I like a guy from another, an, another wrestling league. You could Google that wrestler. So like Raven, you could, you could Google Raven from ECW and there would be a guy who was like, use this hair, use this face, use this. Here's the entire move set, blah, blah, blah. And you yeah. could make you a pretty accurate him. creation. Speaking of, uh, we have a friend of the show, Chill Pony, if you're out there. Uh, he made the best tag team in the history of the uh, the world, Chill Pony and Bishop. And we uh, we miss you, and we love you, and um, we still remember that. And Pat Rounds, wherever you are, I think that was a, a close third. So uh, that's it for uh, Season 1, Episode 8 of uh, our show. Don't watch it. Please don't watch yeah, it. Yeah, don't watch that. Listen to us. Yeah. This is better than last if, week. If, you know, and I just want to also say, too, that, you know, maybe we're not exactly your cup of tea, but, you know, dogs love us. So if you're going to leave your house and you want something for your dog to listen to, just, you know, put our show on and leave it on for them. And we get those sweet, sweet views. And, you know, your, your dog gets to learn about Jar Jar and Kidney Stones and uh, my Twitter account. So that's that's exciting stuff. Luke, where can they find you? Luke underscore Neitzel, N-E-I-T-Z-E-L. And I would love to hear your theory on why The Force Awakens is better than The Last Jedi. I'm Maya Madrid. I frankly don't care. You can find me at Maya Madrid. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>